Do you know what an alpha male? An alpha male is a highly intelligent, confident, successful, and most importantly, according to research in Harvard Business Review, they need to be in charge. So I hear the term alpha male thrown around all the time, and so I wanted to create a little uh, checklist of how you know an alpha, alpha male when you see one, as well as some alpha males out in the real world and how they actually act. So here's some traits of alpha males. You ready? They're often found in positions of power. They're comfortable with high levels of responsibility. They like to and need to call the shots. They're often the most powerful, impressive, or successful person in a room. They are able to draw people to them and have high levels of influence. When I was researching my book cues, I looked into some of the signals of power. What do highly competent, powerful people signal to others with their nonverbal cues, their verbal cues, and even their vocal cues? So we're gonna break down typical alpha males, what they do, and how you can spot them. Cues are the social signals we send to each other. Many of them are invisible but they don't have to be. Together, we will learn how to decode the cues hidden in body language, words, faces, and even voice tone. Let's captivate with your cues. All the tips in this video come from fascinating research from Darioli and Mast. They found there are specific things that highly charismatic, highly powerful people do. Let's go through each of the things they found, and then I'm gonna show you examples of how this looks in real life. Cue number one, congruent nodding. One thing that we don't realize is happening all the time non-verbally is we're looking to see if someone's non-verbal matches their words. And alphas signal to others that they are very confident in their words by aligning their nods with their words. So if they say yes, they agree, it's great, they love it, they accept it, they're shaking their head yes. If they don't agree, I don't think so, I don't really like that, no, I don't think that will work, they're shaking their head no. And they can even do this now without having any words. You will notice that highly powerful people do this both as they speak and as they listen. So not only are they underlining or bolding their words with yes or no, they're also highlighting other people's words as they listen. The perfect example of this is podcaster, actor, comedian, amazing person, Dax Shepard. So I think Dax Shepard is a true alpha and he is incredibly good at using nods both to align and convey his own message. So he nods when he speaks, but he also nods when other people speak. He is one of the top rated podcasts on the planet. He's somehow able to get people to to open up to him, to share their confessions, share their stories. How? I think that his nodding is a huge aspect in this, that when people are opening up and talking, he's encouraging them, he's nodding, he's telling them, yes, please keep going. Research has even found that when someone is nodding with us, we speak three to four times longer. And when someone is saying something upsetting, he's, oh, that's terrible, I can't believe it. How could they do that? I think this is one of the reasons why he is such a great podcast host, that even as an alpha, someone in charge, he's still able to show empathy and mirroring. Remember that being an alpha does not mean that you're not a good listener. It doesn't mean that you have to be the one talking. In fact, Dak Shepard is a great example of an alpha who's a great listener, incredibly empathetic, and focuses on what other people are saying more. And nodding is the cue. Let's take a look at how this works. So watch this interview that Dak Shepard did on CBS this morning. I want you to notice his small but subtle nods that make him extremely captivating. All about the Instagram photos and making life look amazing. Your podcast is the exact opposite. Yeah, we hope it's a tiny bit of an antidote to the curated life. However great you assume your neighbor's life is from Instagram, of course you then heighten Prince Harry's life that much further and then you hear, oh no, you cannot escape the uh, slog of, of life for a human. Like everyone's dealing with trauma, all kinds of things, yeah. trauma trying to stay healthy. About a million people listen to each episode of Armchair Expert. Padman has been best friends with Shepard and his wife. So if you notice here, these aren't huge nods, right? He's not going. No, even when he's listening and he has his, his headphones on, he's just slowly nodding. As she's talking, he's nodding and nodding along with his words. Then he kind of nods negatively when he's talking about something negative. These are subtle cues that signal, I know what I'm talking about and I also want to listen to what you're talking about. Action step, nod with your words while speaking and while listening. Cue number two, reassuring touch. Specifically, the researchers found that charismatic people, especially alphas, tend to touch themselves less and touch others more. 
meaning that alphas aren't usually engaging in nervous touch, like cracking their knuckles or touching their chin or rubbing their neck. Those are all signs of nervousness. Rather, alphas typically don't touch themselves at all, signaling high confidence, but are constantly reaching out to give others reassuring touch. Touch of acknowledgement, touch of encouragement, high fives, back touches. I wanna to show you a couple of different examples of alphas in action. So uh, this first one is Tony Robbins' uh, ultimate alpha. And I want to show you in this video how he reaches out for some reassuring touch. You're also, everybody here is an entrepreneur and you're fucking amazing. I mean, you're a producer, you're an actor, you're a writer, you're a fucking comedy superstar. Mm -hmm. model. How do you go from... Model. What's that? Model. A model. model. <laughs> I forgot that one. Thank you. <laughs> so, but... So here Kevin Hart jokingly corrects him and he's so delighted and surprised that he pats him on the leg to say, yes, that was a good addition, good joke. That is a reassuring touch. Let's look at another one. This is Tom Cruise. So Tom Cruise uses touch in a very interesting way, in almost a camaraderie kind of a way. And I want you to see as the laughter is happening, how much touch he's engaging in and how much it encourages the camaraderie. So I think this touch is interesting because clearly when Rebecca Ferguson is, is, is reaching out to touch him, he is giving a reciprocal touch. So Tom Cruise was not the first toucher. In other words, he did not reach out to uh, Rebecca Ferguson first. She reached out to give him like, oh, that looked like it hurt. And then he reached out to say, yes, it was, it was, that was awful. Reassuring her to say, yes, I feel the camaraderie. A very interesting way to use touch, not self-touch, but reassuring touch or reciprocal touch. Action step, use touch when it will reassure, calm or recognize people. Cue number three, claims space. So one of the things the researchers found is that highly confident people take up space. And I talk a lot about this in cues, that the more space we take up, in fact, when I was thinking about my cover, I wanted to make sure that I was taking up space in the cover because I know that is a signal of high confidence or high competence, that when we feel proud, when we feel confident, we wanna claim our space. So you will very clearly see in so many alpha videos, especially if you're around an alpha, they claim their space. They use armrests, they drape their arm around the side of a couch, they spread and stand really wide. They like to claim the space around them. So I want to show you a couple different clips of different alphas claiming space. Specifically, here is Samuel L. Jackson. So I want you to watch Samuel L. Jackson sit on the couch and see how he literally makes himself at home. He takes up and claims his space, which signals his high confidence. Watch. You seem like you're in a great mood right now, huh? Yeah, man. I mean, how can you have been in a bad mood when The Incredibles 2 finally showed up? That's true. <laughs> so do you notice how he does this quite comfortably? He's not walking in the room like, yeah, I'm Rocky. He's just comfortable. He's taking a comfortable seat. He drapes his arm on the chair. He takes up his armrest. He makes broad hand gestures. This isn't in a way that's um, antagonizing. It's a way that's comfortable. So he claims space in a way that's comfortable. And this is a characteristic of alphas is that they feel comfortable in their space. And so they claim it. Here's another interesting clip. We have three gentlemen here, Hugh Jackman, Michael Fassbender, and James McAvoy. I want you to notice who the alpha is by how much space he's taking up. There's one gentleman in this group of three who's taking up the most space, and I think he's the most alpha. Take a look. Now, Wolverine, mm. he no age, Call me he Hugh, no get please. younger. <laughs> oh, the illusion is complete. Sorry. Wolfie, Wolfie. <laughs> they call me Wolfie. <laughs> Wolverine, Wolverine. I'm not a wolf, I'm a Wolverine. Yeah. <laughs> so notice in this video how um, they're all leaning forward, but Jackman is claiming the most space. So Hugh Jackman claims most space, both with his feet, and then at, by the end of the video, he kind of leans back and rests his arm on the couch, a little bit broader, not aggressively broader, but he's not as tight as the other guys. So if you look at this video, Michael Fassbender and James McAvoy are a little bit close together. Their arms are close to their torso. They're hunched over a lot more. Jackman is much more broad. He's taking up space in his chest. He claims space with his legs and with the couch. Uh, we look at the distance between 
between our torso and our arms, this distance right here to see how closed in are we. When people are really nervous, when people are really afraid, they tend to tighten their arms to their sides, right? They wanna protect their torso. You'll notice that Hugh Jackman has a lot of space here. It's one of the reasons why I encourage people that if they want to be seen as more confident, they should use chairs with armrests. And that's because you're more likely to use the armrests, which creates space here. A little tiny cue to help you claim that space naturally. One other small note here is another way that leaders or alphas claim space is they often sit at the head of the table. So you might also notice that the alpha in your life always takes the head chair. Action step. When you feel confident, claim your space. Cue number four, body openness. Confident alpha people want to be open to the world because they've received good things from the world and they often signal this with open body. So people who don't feel as confident often have a closed body. So they might cross their arms over their chest. They might uh, self-touch. Remember leaders, do, uh, alphas don't do as much. They block their horse or their chest or maybe they hold something in front of them or they block. We know that people who are feeling open and literally open body signals open mind, they tend to be more alpha. And this is what the researchers found as well is that alpha typically signal their confidence with a very open body. This is a build on expansiveness. So not only do leaders claim their space, they also leave their torso nice and open. I want to show you a couple different kind of quintessential alphas and uh, different examples of how they sit, stand, and walk in a very open, purposeful way. So first one, ultimate alpha here, Sylvester Stallone. So watch this interview with Sylvester Stallone. See how he's sitting. Open, Broad, expansive. Seven and a half. Yeah, I think you're being generous. Number three. <laughs> <laughs> three I like. Three I have to go up to. I about. love three. I have to go up to about. So really open, claiming his space, claiming the entire couch, leans forward, keeps his torso nice and open. Here's another one. So this is a, a compilation of the way that John Wayne used to walk into a room, right? When you think about a quintessential alpha, John Wayne always ranks at the top of the list. I want you to walk how he not only walks open, so not kind of crossing over, not hands in pockets, open body, open torso, and slow and purposeful, claiming his space in the world. To take a look at John Wayne. Hi, Sheriff. What swagger. Oh. So you see that that is a slow, purposeful walk, really open, not clutching anything to his chest, no hands in his pockets, no crossed arms, nice and open. I got one more for you here, Marlon Brando, again, ultimate alpha. See these, this, I wanted to show you this is timeless. This is a, a way that alphas behave because they're coded to be more confident. They want to take up space in the world. So Marlon Brando walking into a bar. Great, so this is interesting. So not only does he walk in nice and slow, he even claims space by touching all the chairs. That one I wouldn't recommend, uh, can come across a little bit, like a little bit much, but even that he's claiming space. Nice and slow, nice and open, signals alpha. Action step, to inspire openness, show openness. Cue number five, invites others to participate. One thing that I think that most people misunderstand about alphas is that they're the talkers. And alphas can be the talkers, they can dominate conversation, but they like to control the flow of conversation. And that might mean that they're not in control, they're the one talking the most, but they're the ones who are controlling how people speak. And the way that alphas do this is that Darioli and Mast found that alphas tend to invite others to speak. So they'll say, what do you think? How about you? How about you, George? What's your opinion? In that way, they control the flow of conversation. Dax Shepard is a perfect example of this. He's often the interviewer, so he's not talking a lot, but he's still directing the flow of conversation. So alphas are exceptionally good at this. I wanna show you an example, a ridiculous example from The Aviator. Now, I know this is scripted, I know this is a movie, but it gives you an example of how someone can control the flow of conversation or invite someone to speak up or participate. Watch this clip. You do me a favor, just... Would you just smile for me one time, just once? <sighs> yeah, yeah, you see, you got a short upper lip. Makes for a much nicer smile. <laughs> Now, I don't recommend that you tell people to smile because that has its own issues. I don't love when someone tells me to smile if I'm not in a good mood, but I wanted to show you this as an example that he is giving a compliment, but also asking or inviting some kind of participation. So he's asking for a smile, then he gives a compliment. This is a very alpha move. 
Another example, I want to show you a completely different way to think about this, is alphas are also taking charge when things don't go well. So this is an example of um, someone pulled a prank on Tom Cruise, and instead of backing away or backing down, he actually invites the other person to participate. And again, this is a characteristic hallmark of alphas, is they invite others to speak up, they invite others to participate, even in bad situations. I want you to watch this prank and see how Tom Cruise handles it. It's exciting. You haven't seen it yet, huh? No. Well, it's suspenseful. Is it emotional? Um, is it straight Funny. To the so structurally, the actually, structurally, uh, it's, it's, you know, it's true to form. The structure, the story. You know, it's got a family. It's got the journey of this family. Yes, 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 yes. yes. That's, no, now, why would you do that? Why would you do that? Come here. Come here. Why would you do that? Why would you do that? It's not very funny. Can you please? No, no, it's okay. No, no, wait a second. What's so funny about that? <sighs> so, he, I mean, this is an incredible clip. He doesn't back away or run away. He doesn't reach out in aggression. He actually invites him. He grabs his hand and says, what's so funny about this? No, tell me. Tell me, come and engage with me. I know this is a really interesting way that shows that for alphas, that kind of behavior is ingrained, that they um, are used to bringing people in, they're used to trying to get answers, they're used to trying to elicit opinions. And that was a very interesting way that even in bad situations, that happens. Action step, take charge by inviting others to participate more. Cue number six, use a variable tone of voice and volume. One of the things that the researchers found was that alphas are dynamic in their voice. So they're really fun and easy to listen to because they're always using a variable tone of voice and volume. So when something's really important, they might speak louder and more passionately or more quietly because it's that important. Or they're speaking really fast and excited, but when they're telling a story, they change to once upon a time. They're using their voice to match their tone and their emotional intent, and that hooks in listeners. I want to look at a, a, an old school alpha, Bruce Lee. So this is an interview with Bruce Lee, and in this short clip, you're going to see he uses multiple variable tones of voice to demonstrate different points, and that absolutely hooks you in. So let's watch that. This is Bruce Lee in action. By your enemies and admired by your friends and everything. Thing. But uh, in Kung Fu, it always involves a very fast motion. Like for instance, a guy grabbing your hand. It's not the idea to do so many steps. Step him right on the instep. He'll let go. This is what we mean by simplicity. Same thing in striking and in everything. It has to be based on a very minimum motion so that everything would be directly expressed. <laughs> one motion. And he's gone. Doing it gracefully. Not to go, ah, yelling and jumping all over him, but to do it. Excuse me. <laughs> so th this clip is so dynamic because he's using different volume and different explanation voice. So when he's explaining things, he has a high volume right here. And then at the end, he starts to excuse me, which is sort of funny. He lowers his voice tone. He's in explanation mode for a while, which he uses a certain kind of voice tone. And so you're able to follow him easier because he uses his volume and his tone dynamically. Okay, another example here. This is an inter interview with Jason Momoa ultimate alpha, and this is a story he's telling, and I want you to see how many different variable tones of voice and volume he uses. Did she start dating yet, or, because that's young, are you- No! <laughs> no! No! Lola is a saint. She is gonna be a nun. She is gonna get Lola is a nun. Me. She is a saint. <laughs> no, I'm just saying, this Don't, is- No. Can I tell you? Can what? I can I tell you that I have it way worse? My daughter keeps coming home, some boy named Bo I'm gonna have to beat. Cause oh. like, yeah, like, and she's five, man, I'm screwed. Yeah, five. You're, you're screwed, yeah. yeah. Is she not into boys yet? Is she still like, eh? Yeah, no. Okay. No, no. but I feel Hold sorry on. for them. I mean, it's gonna be fun when the boy does ride. Oh my God. You know what I mean? Okay, so do you notice how in the story he's loud and he's dynamic, he goes over the top, which is funny and it captivates you, and then when he's sharing with Kelly, he's like, oh no, 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 I, he, it's gonna be fun when he doesn't. So it, it's not, it, it's, it's captivating because he's coming in, he's coming low, he's going big, he's going bright, and we love that. Alphas are much more comfortable using their volume and their tone to add emotion.
I want to show you a totally different example of a quiet alpha. So not all alphas are extroverts. Not alphas have not all alphas have to be loud. It's not on only the loudest person in the room. Here's a more quiet example of Brad Pitt doing an interview, and he shows a different kind of confidence, also an alpha, but he uses different volume, a different voice tone in a much quieter way. Just for that movie, or do you like to work out anyway? Do you I, work? I try to stay healthy. I try to do something physical. Mm-hmm few times a week. What do you do? I hit the gym, I do some running. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Weights? Do some weights, throw, mm -hmm. some, throw some weights around. Uh-huh. Yeah. Do you bench press? Yeah. What's yeah. the heaviest you've ever bench pressed? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Okay, so I wanted to show this clip because he's not being big, he's not being loud. And but what he does do is he has a constant kind quiet voice and then he says, throw some weights around. Even that little extra add of dynamic voice tone, I'll throw some weights around, or no, no, I don't do that. It shows a kind of comfort. And remember, as alphas are comfortable with their environment, they're comfortable with themselves, and so they show that by being willing to be a little bit playful. Action step, use lots of vocal variety and dynamic volume. Cue number seven, gaze more, especially at the end of a statement. This one really blew my mind, this tip, because the researchers found that alphas typically make more eye contact, which I wasn't surprised about. They're very curious about people. They want to be engaged with people. But they specifically make more eye contact at the end of statements. My guess is this happens because an alpha is talking, they're, they're processing, and then at the very end of the statement, they want to bring it to you. So they're brainstorming and they're talking, and then they want to see how you feel about that. I saw this in action with another Leonardo DiCaprio example, and you will see specifically, he's gazing around, and then at the end of the statement, he hits Ellen. Gazing around, at the end of the statement, he hits Ellen. So he actually does, I saw this in action, and I was like, wow, this is something that alphas do totally subconsciously, and you can look out for it. Here's an example of this in action. I just wanted to talk about the beard for a minute because it's quite something. And how long did it take you to grow it, first of all? It was uh, uh, six months, and then I, I think I had it for an additional year after that. Mm -hmm. and, and how did <laughs> people treat you? No that's, a, that's, no, that's not what it was during the movie, right? That's cleaned no, that up. No, was, that was it. Oh, really? Yeah, well, then yeah. it didn't look like that in the movie. It, it, maybe it's because there was so much ice on it, too, because it was always frozen. That was actually wax. She I had a, a fantastic makeup artist in this movie who did all the stuff from the bear mauling, and there was wax that she dribbled all over my face every day. It was about a four- to five-hour makeup job every day with all the scars and... So, so again, it was just but, a joy, yes. the whole experience. <laughs> but now see, you, you're growing it back again. Okay, so did you notice if you look at the amount of time that Leo is looking away, and then he hits Ellen at the very end, I didn't notice that until I read this research. I realized that's actually a signal that alphas do, where they don't feel the need to make eye contact all the time, but at the very end of the statement, they want to see if you agree and how you feel. So that was a perfect example that you don't have to make eye contact all the time, but if you want to be seen as more alpha, you could try talking and brainstorming and then coming right back to it. Action step, gaze more, especially at the end of statements. Cue number eight, more hand gestures. So I don't know if you've noticed, in many of these clips, you're seeing a lot of hand gestures. You're seeing a lot of dynamic explanation. And so the researchers found that it is true. Alphas use a lot their hands to explain their concepts, to bold their words. They use their hand gestures purposefully. So they're not just making hand gestures for the sake of hand gestures, but they're being very purposeful with their gestures. They're using their hands to underline or bold their words. I actually did an entire breakdown on this with the ultimate alpha, The Rock. The Rock had so many cues, friends. Like, I was like, okay, yeah, that's The Rock, that's The Rock. So The Rock had so many cues, I did an entire video on him, and he uses hand gestures expertly. So be sure to watch that video breakdown to see how hand gestures work with alphas. Action step, go watch that breakdown. Whew, thank you so much for watching. This was such a fun video to do on breaking down the cues of alpha males. If you like this video, give it a like. If you have alpha males you think I missed that you want me to take a look at, put them below the video so I can check out their cues. Remember, I put out videos every Tuesday, sometimes Wednesday, sometimes Thursday, but I try to put out a video every week, so be sure to subscribe so you can check out my new videos, and I'll see you in our next one. Are you living up to your full potential? Do you want more? I would love to help you. Get started with my free training and learn more about People School today. Visit scienceofpeople.com slash peaceschool.
Did you love this video? Then you might love my book, Cues. In this book, I break down all the hidden signals that we're sending to each other with our body language, our voice, and even our face. Check it out wherever books are sold, and I read the audiobook too.